Good happy Thursday morning, December 24, 2020, and happy Christmas Eve, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday morning, so let's begin. First step, we begin with COVID-19 updates. 21 more Granite Staters die of COVID-19, health officials say. Hospitalizations hit new high in New Hampshire. New Hampshire health officials announced Wednesday that 21 more Granite Staters have died of COVID-19. COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Information, new updates and data. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 38,512 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 18,348,619 619 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 677 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 892 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 324, 674 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases are. In Manchester, 728. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases are. Manchester, 60, 61. And let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, new hospitalization. And red, deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Total current COVID-19 cases. Orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple. Total positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, total hospitalization. Red, deaths. And blue, recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate. Positive and antigen test rate. And daily PCR test. And let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases and female and male of cases. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths. Percent of the population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Our spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. And we're following breaking news that Happened around 9 p.m. last night, authorities responded to a deadly shooting in Dalton, New Hampshire. A state trooper shot, reported in stable condition. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. To that breaking news now, a New Hampshire state trooper is waking up in the hospital on this Christmas Eve following an incident in Dalton. Our Amy Cavino is live now with new information just into our newsroom. Good morning, Amy. Good morning to you, Sean. Sources tell News 9 this happened during a traffic stop in Dalton around 9 o'clock last night, we just learned. And the Attorney General's office revealing that the driver was the lone occupant of that vehicle and he was armed with a rifle and a handgun. This was the scene on Bridge Hill Road when our crews arrived before midnight. Nearly a half dozen police agencies responding to this rather remote Coas County location near the Vermont border. 
The Attorney General's office describes an exchange of gunfire that left the driver dead and the trooper, whose name is being withheld at this point, alive but suffering multiple apparent gunshot wounds. That trooper med flighted to Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center and the AG's office says he remains in stable condition at this hour. News 9 has learned three people were taken into custody Wednesday evening. It's not clear at this point if that was simply for questioning or something more. A source telling News 9 a vehicle related to the incident was found abandoned afterward. An autopsy on the gunman is scheduled for later today. The AG's office also announced just moments ago that that trooper was not wearing a body camera and did not have a cruiser camera. Later this half hour, my colleague Sharice LeClaire is at the scene in Dalton and she has reaction this morning from Governor Sununu. Reporting live, Amy Cavino, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. We will be sure to keep you updated on this whole situation. Health experts advise everyone to limit holiday gatherings to immediate household. Holiday traditions looking different. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9, Nicole Lally. This year, I got the most unique gift for the holidays. My wife gave me a Fleet Air Club membership. For three-year-old Maggie Cashman, a visit to Santa is a little different this year. In fact, all of those family traditions with her new sister Sophia are not what mom Stephanie envisioned when she moved back to Wyndham in the spring. I never thought at this point we would still be here. I thought, you know, by the summertime things would be kind of back to normal. From meeting Santa through plexiglass to postponing family parties, nothing is normal. It's been challenging, again, especially being back in New Hampshire where... Um, we have all our family and friends here, so it's been a challenge, but um, most people are understanding and everyone's kind of in the same boat. The Cashmans, like so many other Granite Staters, though, finding new ways to make those holiday memories. We really need to celebrate the holidays in a different way this year. Dr. Carolyn Clausen says changing or canceling plans is the safe and smart move. And now is not the time to let our guard down. There really is a, a lot of COVID in our community and um, we need to keep our loved ones safe. The guidance similar to what we've been hearing since before Thanksgiving. Skip those large holiday gatherings and travel and opt for virtual celebrations. There has been some real positive news lately, um, but now is not the time to um, start gathering. Just really try to uh, be creative and think of different ways to celebrate this year. For the Cashmans, it will mean a quieter Christmas, but more to look forward to in 2021. I'm disappointed for them, but you know, the nice thing about their age is that they are kind of unaware of everything they're missing out on. Another doctor today using a marathon analogy saying we are in the last point two of that marathon. We need to be tough, tough it out because the reward is greater and we will return to normal soon. Until then, wear a mask and keep your distance. Reporting live, I'm Nicole Lally, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. School nurses will have access to COVID-19 vaccine soon, health officials say. Set to be vaccinated during the phase two. Let's take a listen to that video from WMU Waters 9, Siobhan Lopez. As you make plans this season, consider COVID-19 testing from Quest. Trusted by millions of people like you. Order School nurses are close to the front of the line for the COVID-19 vaccine in New Hampshire. We very much um, see the need to prioritize um, you as health care providers and particularly at risk of acquiring and then um, at risk of potentially uh, further transmission. The vaccine and the state's plan to distribute doses was a widely discussed topic during the Department of Health and Human Services weekly call with school and child care partners. School nurses fall under phase 1A, which is in the beginning stages of being rolled out. We're planning to invite the school nurses to get vaccinated at one of our fixed sites that are run 
um, by us here at the health department with uh, the National Guard and other partners. And uh, those will be at 13 different locations across the state. Health officials say where a person falls within the phased approach is more about the function of their job and less about the title. For example, a worker at a child care facility who acts as the school nurse could be considered an at-risk health care worker. Many school nurses are getting questions about when the general population will have access to the vaccine. People are urged to be patient as that information will be released when available. It's going to be um, widely and publicly promoted as we move through each population. Phase 1A covers about 100,000 people. Health officials say if all goes according to plan, they will each have their first dose by mid-January. For now, the plan is to vaccinate teachers in Phase 2. Reporting in Manchester, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Mount Carmel in Manchester, among the first long-term care facilities to receive the Pfizer vaccine. Walgreens delivering doses of vaccines to residents and staff. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Sharice LeClaire. This year, I got the most unique gift for the holidays. My wife gave me a flea. I actually had staff waiting in line to, to be the first recipients. Mount Carmel Administrator Joe Bohanicki was among the 65 staff and 78 residents who received their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine today. The vaccine requires two doses. It's part of a federal partnership with CVS and Walgreens to administer the vaccines to long-term care facilities. While Bohanicki says there were initial reservations when they first heard about the vaccine, after researching it... I was very comfortable giving it today. No hesitation. More than 8,800 Pfizer vaccines arrived in the state this week to be used at long-term care facilities, which have been a tragic focal point of the pandemic. Bohanicki says while it's still just the very beginning, he gets the sense that residents are relieved. Obviously, long-term care has had outbreaks. Um, we had one back in May, a very short period of time. We've been able to keep it out ever since then. Wow. And I think it's a, a sense of relief to think that if it did get back in the building, that they're going to be protected this next time around. He says long-term care facilities will not be able to let their guards down for some time, but they're making sure to keep spirits bright, especially this time of year. We're still having Christmas dinner. We're still passing out presents. Santa will be here. We're still doing all that, that kind of stuff to make it as normal for them as they can. Walgreens is expected to be back here on January 13th to administer the second round of doses to people who already received the vaccine, as well as administer more doses to people who have not. In Manchester, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Long-term care facilities to be granted access to monitoring antibody treatment for COVID-19 officials say treatment primarily is in hospitals for mild to moderate COVID-19 treatment. Let's take a listen to that video from WMU Warnings 9, Jessica Moran. As you make plans this season, consider COVID-19 testing from Quest, trusted by millions of people. Any tools we can put in our toolbox we need to use. New Hampshire's Department of Health and Human Services Commissioner today telling long-term care facilities they'll soon be able to access monoclonal antibody treatment, a one-dose IV infusion previously only available in outpatient hospital settings. Recipients need to be high risk for progressing to severe COVID-19 or hospitalization. These products are primarily intended for um, use outside of the hospital for people not on oxygen or not on increased oxygen and who have mild to moderate COVID-19 in order to prevent them from being hospitalized um, in the future. Another discussion with health officials, how to respond to long-term care staff concerned about taking the vaccines who may believe in debunked conspiracy theories. When you hear these theories, um, 
hunt them down, figure it out, look for trusted sources that explain the science of why this is uh, true or not true. Dr. Elizabeth Talbot also spoke to why the vaccines are safe, despite how quickly they're being produced. She points to researchers using existing networks, manufacturing the vaccines while still in trials, unprecedented funding, and an efficient review process. No doubt the right talking point is safety and development and implementation has been a top priority. They are being held to the same safety standards as all vaccines. And back to the antibody treatment, state health officials say that they hope to start allocating doses next week and that not, they're not going to have enough for everyone right away and that every facility does not right now have the capability to do that procedure. Reporting live, Jessica Moran, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Community honors Manchester firefighter who died on the job 20 years ago on Wednesday. The community honored David Anderson. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. of anniversaries, firefighters marched together in Manchester to remember one of their own lost 20 years ago. <laughs> David Anderson answered the call on Engine 11 that day, rushing into an apartment building on fire on Elm Street. Without hesitation or fear for his own safety and fighting heavy fire, smoke, and heat conditions, Dave courageously attempted to save two children who were reported trapped. Dave died in that heroic effort. The two brothers, 12-year-old Matthew Flannery and 17-year-old Patrick, were pulled from the fire but died of their injuries. David Anderson collapsed at the scene from a heart attack, making the ultimate sacrifice. District Chief Michael Gamash remembers seeing his friend 20 minutes earlier, talking about the holiday ahead. We embrace him a handshake and a hug, and he wished me and my family Merry Christmas. Little did I know that would be the last time I ever spoke with Dave. 20 years later, it is again two days before Christmas. Fellow firefighters placed a wreath at the memorial and saluted the man known as a big character in the firehouse, a fearless firefighter on the scene. Retired Manchester Fire Lieutenant Bruce Phillips was there that day. But he was always a brother. He was always there for you. So I asked today, you go in peace? God bless you all, and remember, everybody goes home. Gene Mackin, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day, everyone, and I'll be off air the rest of the week. But I'll be back on air Monday. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you for watching this edition of the Riley King Newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Bye, everyone.